Before we can leave chapter 4 behind, we have to do a few more things with the least squares regression line. Now the first thing we want to look at is the coefficient of determination. That's r squared, and it's another numerical measure of the strength of relationship between two quantitative variables. Another measure because, of course, we already have r, which is the correlation coefficient. Now the way that we interpret r squared is a very formal script that you follow pretty much to the letter. Sometimes, you know, with the slope script, for example, we can play around with that a little bit and still get the meaning across um, in a precise way. This particular interpretation we will follow exactly. So you take your r squared and you write it as a percent. So you'll say r squared percent of the total variation in y, whatever your variable y is, explain it with context. And then you'll say is explained by the least squares regression line, period. That's it. <laughs> that is what you will write. So this is the script that you will follow. And actually, I've seen it that way written in books. I've actually seen it presented at board meetings. You know, they'll say, you know, 70% of the variation in enrollment is explained by at least this particular line. So it, it does happen, <laughs> which is actually what we need you to know it for. Um, otherwise, we would skip it. But it does show up. Um, now, we will never find R squared by hand. We will use technology, just as we did with R. Um, it is often written as a percentage, particularly in the interpretation piece. Um, and it's used more in upper level statistics. So you will see it sometimes in later courses as well. Because where R squared really shines is showing which explanatory variable has the most effect on the response variable. And this is the way you're going to see it. That's why I've started. So you'll see it in tables of results, say for a medical study. They'll, they'll try all different um, explanatory variables on a particular response variable, and the one with the R squared that's the highest is the one that has the most effect, or is the, um, the best explanatory variable for that particular response variable. And that you will see. You'll see it in uh, medical textbooks, nursing textbooks. You'll see it in um, criminal justice textbooks. It shows up. So that's how we want you to um, be able to know what it is. So that way, when you see R squared, you'll know exactly what it's talking about. Now, just for a second, let's think about the uh, letters we're using here. Because the correlation coefficient, which was section uh, 4.1, that was r. And now, in this section, we're seeing the coefficient of determination, which is section 4.3, and it's r squared. Why do we need both of them? And the answer is, well, need. <laughs> you know, we, we have both variance and standard deviation. And um, variance and standard deviation both serve slightly different values, but they also tell us, both of them tell us about spread. That's true of these numbers as well. Um, they both tell us about the strength of relationships. So both of them show the strength of relationships, of the linear relationship. And both of them are going to be found with technology. Now, they're only going to tell you strength because the coefficient of determination cannot tell you direction. Remember, the correlation coefficient can give direction. It can tell you positive and negative as well. But the coefficient of determination cannot. Right, direction being positive or negative. Oh, I better make a note. R squared cannot. Right, R squared cannot tell you whether it's positive or negative. Right? It can only tell you the strength. All right, but if you're thinking, look at those letters, R and R squared. I wonder if there's a relationship. The answer is, oh, yes. It is exactly what you think it is. R squared is R, the correlation coefficient, squared. Simple as that, right? So indeed, if you were given R, then you would square it to find R squared. Simple as that. And if you're given R squared, that's the more complicated one then how would you get r? Well, 
it's complicated. <laughs> so the thing about r squared is that you will know, you might know that you want to take the square root, but you might have learned in school that if you wanted to take the square root, you always need to take the plus or minus of the square root. So you would take either the positive or the negative, don't do both, but you would choose which one's correct based on the graph or based on the slope of the line. So you'd choose plus or minus based on the slope of the line, the graph, well, I'll just say that, or the graph, right? So look at your line on your graph and determine is it positive or negative, right? And if it's positive, then you'll choose the positive r. If it's negative, you'll choose the negative r. So that's, going from r to r squared is easy because you just square it, right? If it was negative or if it was positive, it doesn't make any difference because when you square it, it turns it positive. But r squared is always positive. So when you want to find r, you take the square root of r squared, but r could be positive or negative because there can be negative relationships and positive relationships. So you have to choose the correct one based on the slope or the graph. So you'll look at your graph and see, hey, did that line in there have a positive slope or a negative slope? I'll choose the plus or minus symbol accordingly. All right, now r squared also has a relationship picture. Um, again, this is in your note packet for your exam. So this is already in there, this little number line, but it's telling you the same thing that's telling you up in this table. For example, uh, the strong relationships are from 0.64 up to 1, which is a really long area right here. That's the strong part. That's in green. And then your moderate relationship is over here in the blue. And then the weak relationship is in the orange. And then no linear relationship at all is the pink, or kind of reddish pink zone. Right? That's no relation. All right, so where did those numbers come from? Like, how did we get those? And the answer is they're actually the same numbers from before. So if I go and grab section 4.1 for a second, which I'm doing, I can show you that they come right out of the same table that we had for R. So for example, look at the strong relationship. It begins over here at 0.8, but 0.8 times 0.8 is 0.64, which is where that number comes from because it's r squared, right? So take 0.8 and square it, and you have it. And moderate began at 0.5 right here. Look right there. So 0.5 times 0.5 is 0.25, which is where that zone begins, right? So the actually, they're the same numbers as before, or derived from the same numbers as before. They're the numbers from before squared. All right, now let's do the same thing we did with r, but let's apply it with r squared. So we have a whole bunch of graphs and we have r squared values. Aren't they nice at the top? Now we have seven graphs. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. That must mean that one number is used twice. And if you look at the graphs, it should be pretty obvious which one it is. Ah, it's one because these two graphs are perfect. And if you look back, the number one itself is a perfect relationship. It's the only kind, the algebra type of relationship. So this is the one for r squared equals 1 because this is a perfect relationship. And whether it's perfect positive or perfect negative, r squared doesn't tell us. You look at the graph and know that it's a perfect positive. And this is also r squared equals 1, which is a perfect negative. Oh, actually, I'm just going to leave it as perfect. Um, I know it's negative because I can see the slope, but I'll just leave it as perfect because that's all r squared really tells us. Um, to know whether it's positive or negative, you technically are supposed to look at the uh, graphs. All right, so those two both used one. So one is used up, right? One is pretty obvious because those lines are perfect. All right, what about uh, 0.90? 0.90 is actually the answer to the last question. It would be the strongest relationship out there other than the perfect ones, which, you know, they're special. So you would look at all the graphs and figure out which one has the strongest relationship. 
Well, it's pretty obvious. It's letter B, right? Letter B has all the points really tightly clustered around that line. So that's R squared equals 0 0.90 right here. So that's a strong relationship because 0 0.90 is larger than 0 0.64, right? This is all strong in here. As a matter of fact, 0.90 is, is very strong, right? It's quite far over to the right. And that answers this question down here. Besides the perfect relationships, which, you know, the algebra type relationships are obviously great, which is the strongest relationship? It's letter B because R squared equals 0 0.90 is the highest number out there. So that answers that question. <laughs> All right, now what about the next number down, 0.69? So you would look at which is the next strongest relationship which for my money is letter A. It's this one. It's the next strongest one. And that's also a strong relationship. You can see the points are pretty closely tied around that line, but not as closely as this. Now notice, this is a negative relationship. This is a positive relationship. R squared doesn't care. Right? All R squared cares about is the strength of that relationship, how tightly packed around the line the points are. That's what R squared measures, right? It's not going to tell you positive or negative because it doesn't make any difference. R squared is always positive. All right, now, well, actually, I think we'll go the other way. What about the worst relationship out there? Let's get that one done. It's G, right? G looks like a blob. <laughs> there is no shape to G right, at all, as opposed to E and D, which at least have a little of a bit of a trend, right? So E, G is just the terrible. <laughs> it's it's no relation, right? That is not linear. It's it's a blob of points. If you take that line out of there, there's no relation. All right. So that one's no relation at all. So then that leaves the last two, the most difficult ones to discern. One of these is 0.19 and one of these is 0.35. Well, it's a little bit of a tough call, but I would argue that you should imagine that the line is missing. If the line is missing, this one kind of looks like a rectangle, right? Whereas if the line is missing here, I can still see the trend pretty strongly over here, right? See it? So if that line is gone, you can still see where it should be. So I would argue this one is the one that's moderate and that one's the one that's weak. Now, if you reverse them, I probably wouldn't mark you wrong just because you're making a judgment call there. Um, but I would say this one is probably moderate because 0.35 is, it's on the low end of moderate, but it's moderate. And this one I would say is pretty weak. So I would say this one is R squared is 0.19, which is weak. Because if you take that line out, it doesn't even really seem linear. It seems just kind of like a rectangle. Right? So that's a weak relationship. All the rest of the ones on the page were really obvious. These two, one could, you know, argue both ways on. So that would be a more of a judgment call. But I think the judgment we're making here is correct, that that one def definitely has a trend. And so that one's moderate, whereas this one really doesn't. So that one's weak.